Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, is a growing presence as a hub of the rapidly expanding Asian economy. Taikisha Thailand was established in 1971 as Taikisha's first overseas base. It has already been contributing to the advancement of industry in Thailand for over 40 years. Starting with Thailand, Taikisha now has bases in many countries worldwide, and its operations are global. Let's look at the origins of these international activities. Looking back, at Taikisha's century of progress. At the beginning of the 20th century, after Japan opened its borders to the world, a wide range of technology and infrastructure construction began to take root, introduced from the West. In 1909, Takeshi Uenishi entered L Labeled Company, a trading company importing German machinery. He was an enthusiastic and ambitious young man, eager to set up his own business. Kurt Meisner, the general manager of Labeled Company in Tokyo, observed the gas engine sales activities of Takeshi Uenishi, and Meisner decided to entrust the operation of a new company to this talented young man. On April 10, 1913, Kenzaisha was established in the area now known as Ginza in Tokyo as a joint stock company. Yoshitaro Hayakawa, a friend of Takeshi Uenishi and the founder of Korakuen Baseball Stadium, became one of the directors. The main business operations were sales of building materials imported from Germany and installation works. Even in those days, this company had the ability to conduct the proactive international business operations of the Taikisha of today. The first big project was the delivery and installation of boilers and elevators at the Osaka branch of the Mitsui Bank, as well as building a heating system for the bank. The German engineer, August Peter Tettens, was the senior supervisor of the works. Tettens' achievements in the area of heating system design for this bank was a major event for the entire heating system sector in Japan. Then, in 1914, Kenzaisha was awarded a contract for heating system works for the eight-floor Tokyo Marine and Fire Insurance Building. Dr. Tatsuzo Sone was the man who laid the foundations for Japan's modern architecture, and Kenzaisha completed this large-scale project under his supervision. Tetens was the head engineer for the heating system, and this project, which took four years, was a success. Based on this success, Kenzaisha commenced full-scale building equipment and system works. In September 1923, just as the corporate structure of Kenzaisha had taken shape, a major setback occurred in the form of the Great Kanto Earthquake. This disaster resulted in the death of over 130,000 people, and the corporate building of Kenzaisha was also destroyed by fire. However, having confirmed that all his employees were safe, a few days later, Takeshi Uenishi set up a temporary office, and business was resumed in spite of the great difficulties prevailing. In the next year, 1924, the company commenced construction of a new corporate building. Kenzaisha rose up from the ashes and rubble. Recovery from the Great Kanto earthquake did not proceed as had been hoped. Moreover, Japan was soon buffeted by the repercussions of the Great Depression of 1929, which led to a severe worldwide economic depression. In West Japan, which had not been affected by the earthquake, industry advanced, centering on cotton spinning. At the Osaka branch of Kenzaisha, the younger brother of Takeshi Uenishi, Keiji, felt that the future of the company would be in air conditioning systems for the textile industry, a new sector. 
Beginning in the 1930s, there was a major increase in the installation of air conditioning systems essential to the production process in spinning mills, and Kenzaisha rapidly expanded its operations in this area. Temperature and humidity control were extremely important for spinning mills, because if the air became too dry, the thread would break, and if the humidity was too high, the heat and humidity would make working conditions too harsh. In 1935, Kenzaisha introduced a US-built steam jet refrigeration system for spinning mills, a first for Japan. This was the main type of large-scale refrigeration system used at that time. Subsequently manufactured in Japan and using this steam jet as its own technology, Kenzaisha was able to guarantee high quality installation work for customers at lower cost. The factors that led to a relationship with automotive manufacturing systems were installation of a steam heater for the drying oven at Ford Japan's Yokohama plant in 1936, and the installation of a drying oven for the Koromo plant of Toyota Industries Corporation in 1937. However, in 1941, the Pacific War broke out. In 1943, Kenzaisha celebrated its 30th year of operation during this war. Although conditions were very hard, Takeshi Uenishi sought to make the company able to motivate people by introducing a system enabling employees to invest in the company. In the summer of 1945, the Pacific War came to an end. As the war was over, plans were formulated to rebuild the company, but the spiritual mainstay of the employees, Takeshi Uenishi, died in 1948 at the age of 66. His son, Jiro Uenishi, became the new president, and in 1950, Keiji Uenishi, a director of the company, was appointed as the new president. From 1955, construction work started on post-war reparation in the countries of Southeast Asia, and Kenzaisha more or less monopolized the construction of textile plants. This was due to its success in Japan in the area of textile plants, and its ability to operate outside Japan due to its capacity to formulate drawings and estimates in English, a legacy of having invited foreign engineers to work for Kenzaisha in the pre-war years. The foundations for the overseas network of today were created in this way. In the area of automotive paint finishing systems, Kenzaisha was awarded its first contract for paint spraying booth works at the Nissan Austin factory in 1950, and a contract for spray booth and drying oven works at the Omori plant of Isuzu Motors in 1953. In addition to its air conditioning systems, Kenzaisha also engaged in full-scale paint finishing system operations. Subsequently, motorization began to get underway in Japan, empowered by the advent of domestic-made cars and the construction of expressways. Then, in 1959, Kenzaisha was awarded a contract for its first integrated automotive paint finishing line for mass production of compact cars from Toyo Kogyo Company Limited. Due to the success of this work, Kenzaisha's paint finishing system technology was greatly enhanced. In 1963, Kenzaisha received a contract from Nissan Motors Chile and in 1965 from Nissan Motors Mexicana. These were the first overseas paint finishing system works undertaken by Kenzaisha. In the 1960s, the Tokyo Olympics were held and Japan entered an era of high economic growth. In 1963, the 50th anniversary of Kenzaisha's establishment was held and awards were presented to employees with many years of service. In Japan's era of high economic growth, Kenzaisha was able to expand its operations in areas such as building air conditioning systems, industrial air conditioning systems, and automotive paint finishing systems. 
In 1963, Japan's building height restriction of 31 meters was abolished, and construction of high-rise buildings boomed. In the industrial air conditioning sector, in addition to textile mills, installation of these systems in chemical, pharmaceutical, and home electric appliance plants increased progressively. In the 1960s, Japan's automotive industry engaged in active equipment investment to switch the main thrust of production from trucks to cars, and Kenzaisha provided the latest cutting-edge technology. Kenzaisha won contracts for numerous big projects, and sales rose rapidly. In line with changes in the corporate structure, it became an urgent objective for Kenzaisha to improve the corporate philosophy and business plans. In 1970, Keiji Uenishi announced a corporate policy of customers first. After a half century of operating under the founding spirit, a re-evaluation was made, and a breath of new life flowed into the company. In 1973, on the occasion of its 60th anniversary, Kenzaisha changed its corporate name to Taikisha, and a celebration was held to mark this new beginning. A new start. The corporate name Taikisha embodies an understanding of the needs of the global environment and the way the world is evolving. The 1973 oil crisis led to control of energy resources, and this resulted in major changes in the industrial sector. In the wake of the 1973 oil crisis, due to their excellent fuel economy, sales of Japanese cars increased in the USA, and trade friction arose between Japan and the US. To avoid such friction, in the 1980s, there was a speed up in establishing operations in the U.S. by the Japanese auto manufacturers. Taikisha received orders for the first phase of plant construction work for Honda of America Manufacturing and a robot painting system for Nissan Motor Manufacturing Corporation, USA. In June 1981, TKS Industrial Company was established in the U.S. Subsequently, Taikisha also received orders from the big three U.S. auto manufacturers. From the advent of the 1973 oil crisis onward, in Japan, many large public sector projects were postponed or frozen. An adverse time for the construction sector ensued. However, infrastructure projects flourished in the Middle East due to the massive inflow of oil dollars, and Taikisha participated in the construction of numerous hospitals and schools. The experience gained through these projects became a major source of strength in its subsequent overseas operations. In the wake of the Plaza Accord of 1985, the yen appreciated rapidly, and in 1991, Japan's economic bubble burst. Japan's domestic market shrank, and the manufacturing sector rapidly relocated their plants overseas. In 1985, Teiichi Abe was appointed as company president, and Taikisha rapidly expanded its overseas operations to align operations with those of its customers then engaged in a move to overseas locations. In Asia, Taikisha established bases in many Asian countries and regions. Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore were the first areas in the region it became active in. Later, many other Asian countries were added. Today, Taikisha has bases worldwide, including those in Europe and in North, Central, and South America. And this global network has become a major strength of the Taikisha group. From the middle of the 1990s, reflecting the huge increase in the use of cell phones and the internet, investment in plants and equipment increased, mainly in the electronics sector. Under these circumstances, Taikisha utilized the know-how it had acquired by making air conditioning systems for the spinning industry to create clean rooms for numerous semiconductor and LC display plants, both in Japan and overseas. 
In the building air conditioning system sector in Japan, construction of telecom related facilities and redevelopment and construction of high rise buildings increased, mainly in urban areas. In the automotive paint finishing sector, against the backdrop of very prominent economic growth in the emerging nations, especially China, there was an increase in the construction of plants in these areas. Drawing on its extensive overseas experience and technological expertise, Taikisha responded to the needs of its customers. The age moved on from the 20th to the 21st century. Hiroshi Yamamoto was appointed as president in 2001, and Yoshiro Nakaya was appointed to this post in 2007. In 2006, an event occurred that Taikisha accepted as a lesson for the future. Then, in 2008, a global economic crisis occurred. As a difficult business climate continued to prevail, Taikisha went back to its original management principles. Under the key word of transparency, the company worked hard to strengthen its corporate fabric. In 2010, signs of brightness began to appear in the world economy due to the rapid advance of the emerging nations. Eitaro Uenishi was appointed as president, and he positioned the achievement of greater globalization of operations and strict adherence to corporate governance as key elements in management. In addition to providing services for Japanese customers, utilizing the global network it has built up over many years, Taikisha obtained contracts relating to numerous overseas construction projects. In fiscal year 2011, the ratio of overseas sales exceeded that of domestic sales. Taikisha engaged in many construction projects that became symbols of the host countries. And recently, Taikisha has proactively engaged in overseas projects, including the establishment of the Taikisha R&D Center in Tianjin, China, the setting up of a subsidiary in Cambodia, and an alliance with Jayco of Italy. In 2013, Taikisha celebrated its centennial, and in April, Eitaro Uenishi became chairman, and Satoru Kamiyama was appointed as president. With this new management team in place, a long-term business plan was formulated to ensure sustainable growth over the long term. The customer's first spirit is still a central guideline and will be handed on to the coming generations. One hundred years have passed since the founders of Taikisha started out in business in 1913 with ardent ambition in their hearts. Taikisha has grown to become a major corporate group with some 5,000 employees. We seek to create a pleasant living environment for the people of the world, and we're moving forward to our second century of service to industry worldwide while preserving our international nature carefully nurtured ever since our foundation and strict adherence to our customers' first spirits.